just one one thing. Sure. Are we going to do that after the hearing? What you just said, you were going to do. We're, we're going to consider the options, uh, given that Mr. Pagliano has, is uh, not attendance after he was issued a, a subpoena. Uh, we will deal with that after the conclusion. And one of those things that we might consider is going into executive session, since Mr. Pagliano said he would be happy to come uh, in executive session. Would, be, would that be one of the things? I will entertain all of the potential requests, but I'm telling you, I have no intention of going into executive session when he thumbs his nose at the United States Congress, waste this committee's time, U.S. Marshals having to serve subpoenas, and him for him, him not to show. That is just not acceptable. Mr. Chairman, on a point of order. Just, yes. I, I just want to understand this uh, as well as I can. Did, did the chairman issue a, a, a criminal referral on Mr. Pagliano? We, when we heard that the FBI had not looked at anything that Secretary Clinton had testified uh, under oath before Congress, uh, we did give a referral. Okay. When and, we and, learned and, more and, and, and that's outstanding, right? I mean, we... We don't know. We don't know. Well, you issued it. We issued it, but we you, don't know. Here's, here's my point. Here's my point. You issued a criminal referral for an individual, and then you asked him to come in here and testify before Congress. That is, that is, that, let that, me clarify. that would require him to surrender his Fifth Amendment rights if, he's, if, if you're, you're referring him and putting him under threat of, of criminal prosecution and then asking him to come in here. That's not fair. And, and the immunity doesn't cover him because your referral for criminal prosecution came after the fact and beyond, beyond the limited purpose for which he was granted immunity, sir. There so, was no criminal referral on Mr. Pagliano. Did we refer the comments and the issues that Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Comey, as the director of the FBI, brought up? Absolutely, we did. Right, which, which, which... He said that, he required... Of that, he required... Mr. He required us to send but, that. But it puts him at risk. What we have done, as a committee, and through you, on this referral, is put him under threat of criminal prosecution because of the... because the of the issue that you're investigating. I understand that. I understand that. The I understand that. But... It, it puts him in, in jeopardy coming before this committee while that criminal referral is in existence. And I'm just saying, he's an American citizen. I know the Constitution gets in the way of this committee sometimes, now, lately. The gentleman will suspend. The gentleman will suspend. The gentleman will yield. The, um, to clarify, the referral was to look at, at Secretary Clinton's testimony before Congress. Okay, that was the referral. Um, Mr. Pagliano, his attendance is required here. There was interaction with Mr. Pagliano with another committee, but that's another committee. You have to bring that up with the other committee. I'm concerned about the integrity of this committee. I think we've done the right thing here. He's con his attendance is required here today. He's not here, and we will deal with that afterwards. We do have Mr. Combetta here. Mr. We do Chairman. have Mr. Mr. Thornton here, and we do have Mr. Cooper here. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from South Carolina. Um, could I engage with the chair in a colloquy? Yes. I, I thought witness Pagliano was granted immunity. That's what I've read. Well, Congress can't prosecute anyone, so the one entity who can has granted him immunity. I'm trying to figure out what his criminal liability is. If the gentleman would yield? Well, I was having a colloquy with the chairman, I understand but, that, if you, but, but I if you can answer the question, I'll be happy to, yeah, happy to hear the from F you. The FBI granted him limited immunity for the purpose of... The FBI of didn't grant him immunity. The Department of Justice granted that, him that's immunity. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. For that limited purpose. How do you know it was limited use immunity? We, I haven't seen the immunity agreement. Let me also inject here. No, I, 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 I have great respect for Mr. Lynch. I have asked what his, kind of a... His, his, his attorney, his attorney, Mr. Pagliano's attorney, says in his letter that Hold on, he was given limited immunity for that purpose. Well, that raises another interesting question that I hope the gentleman from Massachusetts will help me figure out, which is uh, when you've reached an agreement with the government, oftentimes it includes cooperation with other entities within that same government. So I wonder whether the Department of Justice and their proffer or immunity agreement with Mr. Pagliano made it clear that he needed to cooperate with another branch of government. 
We can't prosecute anyone. Only the Department of Justice can. And they've made it, frankly, crystal clear. They're not prosecuting anyone in this fact pattern. So where's the criminal liability? The gentleman has constitutional rights under the Fifth Amendment. Whether they are violated by the FBI or violated here in Congress, well, but, still but, violated. But, but as the gentleman from Massachusetts knows, the Fifth the Amendment... Witness, he, he, he cannot Fifth be required Amendment, to be a witness against himself. Uh, uh, right, but the Fifth yeah. Amendment doesn't protect you from non-incriminating answers. Well, we've got a criminal pro- referral here. Not on it, him. It, he can uh, say sure his is. name. Sure it is. He can say where he works. Sure Every it answer it, it doesn't was issued incriminate after. The gentleman, the gentleman from, from Massachusetts will suspend. The gentleman from South Carolina says time. I, I was... Just inquiring of the chair, I I thought there was an immunity agreement in place between the Department of Justice and this witness. So if he's been immunized and you can't prosecute anyone for anything, where is the criminal liability to him coming and answering questions? Which which further assumes that every question you ask is going to expose him to criminal liability. There is no Fifth Amendment privilege against answering non-incriminating questions. Will the gentleman yield? Sure. But he can incriminate himself because we've issued, a, a, you know, a, a criminal referral here. He's got immunity. Because of the, he doesn't have immunity. He doesn't have immunity. He doesn't have immunity. You I'll, haven't seen the immunity I'll enter this agreement. Re- yeah, look at it. If you want to read it yourself, it's from the gentleman's attorney. He has, he's got limited well, no, immunity. No, I'm going to need so, a more reliable source than a criminal defense attorney. I want to read the agreement itself. I want to read the agreement between the Department of Justice and this witness. And whether or not that agreement requires this witness to cooperate with other entities of government, that is commonplace. For them to say, you can tell us the truth, but you can't tell Congress, makes no sense. That's all I want. Okay, the gentleman will suspend. The committee should also be aware that the committee uh, did send a subpoena to Mr. Pagliano to produce this immunity agreement. That was due today at 10 a.m., and he did not produce that as well. So he was under subpoena to not only have his presence here, but so that everybody on this panel can see this immunity agreement, which he supposedly has in his possession. Those documents were also subpoenaed by the committee, and he did not comply with that as well. It's the intention of the chair here. We're going to move on. There's a lot to address with Mr. Pagliano. Like I said, we're not letting go of this, but we need to continue with this hearing.